In Matthew 7:15, Jesus says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. False prophets can be found in Scripture all the way back in Deuteronomy when God spoke of prophets who would presume to speak words in God's name that he had not commanded them to speak. False prophets continue to be a problem even up to the early church when teachers were discovered who would secretly bring in destructive heresies to the church and would twist scripture in order to create a following for themselves. And to this day, this problem has not gone away. In fact, false teachers continue to get worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But thank God his word has much to say about this problem and how it should be handled. In this video, we will be looking at some of the false teachings of Todd White. We will see how he twists certain scripture to change its meaning, and we will look at what those verses actually teach in context. This will reveal Todd White to be a false prophet that should not be followed. However, please bear with me for the rest of this video, as at the end we will address Todd White's repentance. One thing that is pretty central to Todd White's teaching is something called the Kenosis Doctrine, which has to do with Jesus emptying himself and his incarnation. This comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7, which says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Todd White teaches that this means that Jesus laid aside his divinity, which would mean that he stopped being God. Todd White says things like, while Jesus was on earth, he did not walk this out as God, but as a man and right relationship with God. He teaches that the reason that Jesus did not walk this life out as God but as a man in right relationship with God, is so that we can do all the things that Jesus did. He will say things like, If Jesus came as God, I couldn't follow him. But if he came as a man in right relationship with God, I can follow him. Todd White's understanding of following Jesus is that as believers, we should be able to do everything Jesus ever did, because we are also just people in right relationship to God. He diminishes who Jesus is and exalts who we are so that he can say that since Jesus could know the future, know people's thoughts, heal the sick, raise the dead, walk on water, calm storms, that we should be able to do all these things as well because we are on par with Jesus, according to Todd White. To understand what Philippians 2 is really teaching, we need to look at it in context. In the beginning of this chapter, Paul is teaching believers to be united in love with one another. And to do this, we must do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. He is teaching believers to be humble here, being concerned with others' needs above your own. Then he shows believers what the ultimate example of humility is, Jesus himself, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And this emptying of himself does not mean that he removed his divinity. Look closely. Even though Jesus was in the form of God and equal to God, he took on the form of a servant, and he was born in the likeness of men. Nowhere here does it say that Jesus gave up any divine attributes. Emptying himself here means that he took on the form of a servant and was born in the likeness of men. Jesus emptied himself here by adding humanity to himself, not removing divinity. Jesus was and is fully God and fully man, 
and everything he did, he did as fully God and fully man. And his humility goes even further. Not only did Jesus humble himself by being born in the likeness of men, but also being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. This is the ultimate example of humility, that God the Son would take on the form of man and become obedient to death, even death on a cross. There could not possibly be a greater example of humility, and yet, ironically, Todd White twists these verses in order to take what's meant to teach us humility and instead teaches us to exalt ourselves by making us on par with Jesus. In more recent interviews, Todd White was asked directly about this, and he says that he never believed that Jesus stopped being God, but that he didn't utilize his divine privileges. But he continues to say things like, Jesus set aside all of his divinity, Jesus was not born as God, Jesus did not walk this out as God, but as a man and right relationship with God, also that he can continue teaching that we are also just people in right relationship with God and therefore we should be able to do everything Jesus did because we are on par with Jesus. The reason Todd White teaches this is because of his obsession with miracles and signs and wonders. He equates following Jesus with going after anything that he perceives as supernatural which may be why he follows and endorses well-known false prophets like Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland, even calling Kenneth Copeland a spiritual father to him. But he thinks that being a believer and following Jesus means that you can do any of the miraculous things that Jesus did. Todd White seems to care about signs and wonders more than anything else. Yet, if we look at 1 Corinthians 12, the chapter about spiritual gifts, we see that after listing the spiritual gifts, verse 11 says, But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as He wills. So we cannot do anything miraculous whenever we will, but the Holy Spirit works these things and gives gifts individually as He wills. And reading the following verses shows that he doesn't give every gift to any one person, but distributes different gifts to different members of the body of Christ as he wills. But more importantly than miracles is how Todd White presents the gospel. Typically, his version of sharing the gospel involves a great deal of talking about himself and his conversion and all the supernatural things he claims to have experienced and all the miracles he has supposedly done. Outside of that, sharing the gospel usually just involves telling people that God loves them and that they are awesome and that they are valued. And not so much that they are sinners that need forgiven, but lost sons or daughters that need to know who they are. Although to be fair, over the last couple years, he has been talking more about sin and repentance, as we will see when we address his own repentance at the end of this video. Todd White teaches that we are so valuable that heaven had to go bankrupt to get us back. He teaches that the cross is the revelation of our value and that we are worth the blood of Jesus. But the Bible teaches that none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside, together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Clearly from scripture, prior to salvation, we are not inherently awesome and valuable, and we are not lost children who need to know who they are. Instead, Ephesians 2 says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. 
Notice it says that those without Christ are not children of God, but instead are sons of disobedience and children of wrath. Apart from Christ, we are dead in our sins and deserve the righteous wrath of God for eternity. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God is so indescribably loving and merciful that even though we deserve hell forever, instead he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus, God the Son incarnate, fully God and fully man. And Jesus lived the perfect, sinless, and righteous life on our behalf so that we can be credited with his perfect righteousness. Then on the cross, he bore the wrath of God that we do deserve for our sin, even though he didn't deserve any of it. He died on the cross in our place, and then three days later rose to life again. And anyone who turns from their sin and follows him, putting their faith in Christ alone, will be saved from their sin and the punishment that they deserve for it. And they will get to have everlasting life with our good and gracious God, even though we definitely don't deserve that. Notice in the following verse why God does this, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. The cross does not reveal our value. It actually reveals how truly sinful we are, that it took the death of God's own Son to save a people like us. God does not save us because we are so awesome and valuable, but because He is. God is so awesome and valuable that He saves us in spite of who we are, not because of it. God is good and deserves all the glory. This is the Gospel. So a couple of years ago, in one of his sermons, Todd White repented, saying, quote, This is hard for me because I feel like I haven't preached the whole gospel, and I repent. It sounds really good and convincing at first, and he makes some good points, referring to how he hasn't been preaching sin and the purpose of the law and bringing us to repentance. Not long after this, many people made videos about his repentance and some follow-ups later trying to determine if this was genuine. One critical thing to note is that in an interview with Remnant Radio, Todd White clarified that he did not believe that he had been preaching a false gospel, but that the Lord had just been revealing more of it to him. So Todd White's repentance means that he believes he has been preaching the truth this whole time, just missing a certain piece of it, and now he is preaching the whole thing. The problem is, as has been shown in this video, Todd White has been preaching an entirely false gospel, not just missing some things. So he has not repented of preaching a false gospel, but just added some truth to his overall false teaching. He also has not repented of his kenosis teaching, but rather claims that he never taught that Jesus stopped being God. But if he really believes that, he uses a lot of confusing and contradictory language when talking about Jesus' divinity. He also hasn't repented of his fake leg lengthening trick, which is intentional deception because he knows God is not miraculously growing people's legs, but that he is manipulating the angle of the ankles, which has been proven on video. He has also not repented of endorsing false teachers like Kenneth Copeland and Benny Hinn, and other disturbing and false teachings Todd White has taught since his repentance. However, Todd White has also been quoted saying, in reference to people saying he's deceived, quote, If I'm deceived and you're not crying out for me, and you say that you love God, you're a liar because you actually hate me. There's some truth to what he says there. As Christians, we should desire to see Todd White truly saved and not deceived. We should want to see God bring Todd White to true repentance and faith in him. We should pray to God for that and genuinely hope that he answers that prayer. That should be our desire for all false prophets and deceived people. We are not any better than them. We are just saved by the grace of God, and we hope that God will do the same for them. 
Follow the links in the description to see videos concerning Todd White's repentance, as well as other resources talking about his teachings. Thanks for watching.